Hi, welcome to Almost Cooperstown. I'm Mark. And this is Gordon, and we love talking about baseball. Welcome to Off-Season Episode 6, Baseball Expressions. There are lots and lots of baseball expressions, and um, people use them every day. So, Gordon, I think today you're going to you know, kind of lead us off and uh, let us... Let I mean, us, there's one right there. I lead mean, us <laughs> off. You're right. That's great. It, it, it Perfect. Is, it, is, it is true, though, because like... The, the, and this is less from the expression of like expressions that are specific to the game of baseball and things that have kind of leaked out into everyday parlance and like are things people use and say as a part of everyday Idiot, speech. Right. Like, like hit it out of the park. Like everybody... I, I've definitely used that at work just being like oh yeah we really want to make sure this project hits it out of the park like this is a completely normal saying nobody will look twice at you for making that kind of reference hit, hit a home run being the same thing basically mm -hmm. strike out like strike out is used everywhere like when you think about it like oh you you went to the bar and you you struck out last night you didn't everybody get knows what that means yeah exactly <laughs> like there's a lot of things that are like that you know play hardball I mean, for even one, like something that's like for like something unexpected here, something out of left field, like, you know, it's just really interesting that there's so many different ones that are like and then you, you that that are used and then some that, you know, are pretty close to sort of their original intention, like, oh, you know, somebody's something's on deck. Like in baseball, that's talking about the guy that's next up in bat. Pretty much everybody uses on deck to refer to the next up thing. But it like, came out of baseball, basically. If there was no baseball, you wouldn't have that expression. Mm -hmm. But throw someone a curve means absolutely nothing in real life is what it means in baseball. In baseball, you're throwing them a curveball. In real life, you're throwing them something rather unexpected. Right, because the curveball is meant to fool you. So. True. Yeah. But, but but it's just different in how it's used. It's interesting, like, you know, what the, the meaning overall, you know, go for a single or a double. Yeah, it's different when you, you take it outside of baseball, even though if the tension somewhat the, – the intention is somewhat the same. Right. In business, a lot of times, you know, they're saying if, you go, if you're going for the home run you know kind of play in business or maybe you should just get some singles and doubles get some things that you can do and and, and so that that lets people know you know what, kind of what you're yeah yeah you think you know play it more conservatively you know it's just it's just interesting you know on the ball you know if in, in baseball if you're being on the ball and you know i, I guess on the ball exists outside of it too it to does but in baseball it was keep your head on the ball to watch it when right. you're hitting you know and, and, and to keep yourself you know your head in the game essentially and you don't want to always swing for the fences so there's another you know same kind of an idiom you know where you're oh yeah you're going for too much you're trying to do too much mm -hmm. i mean rain check you know a rain delay you know i'll take a rain check for that right people do people even think where that came from that probably from not and, and i imagine there's a lot i bet there's a lot of expressions like that where people are just completely ignorant to wherever the actual like origination of that well, phrase how about was. this guy you know he goes out all the time and you know when he comes he's batting a thousand yeah, exactly. We, we, we know we know what that is, right? He's getting it right all the time. I mean, there was an entire movie uh, with what? With is she out of the league? Like she's, she's out, out of my, of my league. league, right? Like, Steve Arashel, yeah, uh, exactly. That's a, that's a funky movie. It's I a, like that movie. It's a, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a Judd Apatow movie, but um, it's just interesting to think about how like that expression is a baseball expression in terms of the origination, but people use it, you know, at everyday speech like it's totally normal well, you would step up to the plate but she's out of your league yeah exactly and <laughs> yeah, that's two baseball expressions both used in a complete non-baseball form you know and if you're not really sure you'll give somebody a ballpark figure yep you know oh yeah oh yeah we know what that means yeah yeah, yeah people know what these means and i think it's just because baseball has been around for so long and in a lot of ways it was also been around for the period of time where the current version of american culture has been essentially formed from but it all, but but the derivations you don't think of like if you say somebody haven't seen him in a while I need to touch base with him right right, right but that, that, that comes from from when you actually had to touch the base right right but that, what I'm saying is it makes sense though when you think about it because like so much of the current way we speak and refer to things yeah. has come been born out of essentially you know since the turn of the 20th century so 1900 onwards and when you look at that. You, if if that's when a lot of our modern way of speaking has been developed, it makes sense that baseball idioms would be such an ingrained part of our culture because that's been something that's been around for that entire period. Very few things you could say that are like that. And 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 I'm, as I think about this, I think there's a certain amount of chauvinistic 
uh, talk in this baseball talk and you think about things that, that men have used because men played baseball and it kind of got so I would think if you're getting to first, second or third base that's not a term a woman ever used you, no, no, no <laughs> and it is something that's like 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 it's not a great when you think about it right, it's just like right. oh god <laughs> the, the sportification of that is something that is very you know ma- you know it's a very patriarchal thing in a way but everybody men and women alike know exactly what you mean when you're talking about it exactly so yeah that uh, so there are lot, lots of idioms, um, but there also are, you know, a lot of uh, just uh, general expressions, you know, that are indigenous only to baseball that really don't go outside the sport too much. They right, right. and that, I think those are where you get some of the, the more creative turns of phrase or expressions because a lot of these have existed because they're so general, right, right. and it, we've just chosen this terminology to express the sentiment. Right, right, right. But you'll 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 know. So I have a bu- I have a list. I'll throw them at you. I, I'd say you 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 get you'll get them. You're a baseball guy. But before that, let's talk about nicknames. You ready for curveballs? How um, many how many nicknames for curveballs can you come up with? Oh, see, see now you're putting me on the spot, and bit. every single one of them has left my mind. Uh, okay, so so besides uh, a the hook. A bender, right? yeah, a hook, right, 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 a, a hook, uh, right, um, and just a, a, an old fashioned breaking ball, right? Yeah, yeah, breaking ball. Would you call like a twelve to six? Like, okay, I, that's I, I don't know if you would call that a, 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 a twelve to six. If you said a twelve to six, a baseball person would know you're talking about a curveball, right? Yeah, um, how about a yacker? A yacker. A deuce. A deuce. How about Uncle Charlie? Yeah, I've heard of an Uncle Charlie. It's Uncle Charlie. And that's the thing. I bet if you just start reading them off to me, I will be like, so oh, yeah, I know every I know. single I one. I, I told you this. So um, as a Met fan, you know, back when Dwight Gooden was pitching, yeah. his curveball was so good that Tim McArthur said, no, that's not an Uncle Charlie. That's a Lord Charles. That's a Lord Charles. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the, the thing a is, spinner. I remember a, spinner, I, I, a guy yeah. used to catch me. So yeah, that's a little. That's the best I could do because it would come a from like spinner. a sp- a spinum one. It wasn't I, a very good. No, ball. no, no. Spin <laughs> spinner. I feel like there's a little. That that one's a bit more tenuous. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So okay, so how about uh, general expressions? Like if, if you hear the term aspirin, as it's. In baseball, you know, okay, and I'll put it in context. And yeah, without say, context. He's throwing aspirin. Like a really hard. Right. The, the, the ball looks so small, it looks like aspirin. So that's a bit of an old – and how about that, – that, That's definitely an old school That's expression. an old school thing. And as is, well, the derivation of a Baltimore chop. That's when you slap the ball down in front of the home plate, right? right because right. that was based off of the fact that the, in front of the Baltimore home plate, it was like really bouncy. So you would get like a ton of kick up into the air. Excellent. That was a legit that's way right. Of back, that, back in 1890, the Orioles, I guess their, in, their, their field uh, management guy, groundskeeper, would come in and he would dry it all out. So it was like cement. And so the players would actually intentionally chop the ball down onto there. It would bounce up so high that the guy could run all the way down to first base before they could field the ball and throw him out. What was really a ground ball but it really wasn't a ground ball. And, and it makes sense why that would be so effective because you took away oh probably away the majority of the guys that got out is basically hitting pop-ups right and think about think about the we talked about this in some of our other pockets think about how heavy the bats were and and how hitting the ball far wasn't as important no just making sure you got on base was important it, exactly. so slap it against the ground and make them have to make a play every single time so you've heard the term bandbox. Really tiny ballpark, right? Exactly. Like, you know. and, I, and really, I think that's the only reason you hear that nowadays, or at least I've heard, is because I've listened to enough AM talk radio with the Mets Mets people making fun of Yankee Stadium for being tiny, and they call it a band box. Well, it's only tiny in in but down the right for field left line, field, but but for left handed hitters, yeah. They call it a band box. The short porch. It's a it's, short porch. No, that's, actually, that's not one I'd even uh, remember yeah. to put in there. Um, okay, if something is bush league. Uh, not uh, on the up and up, essentially. Amateur. Amateur-ish, yeah. 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 That's Bush like, League. It's generally a, a less than reputable kind of play. So that probably, I, I should have, should have I'm pretty action. sure it comes from like the minor leagues. If you're far down in the minor leagues, you're in the Bush League where there's nothing, you know, going on there. Like, and I could almost imagine the original intention for that kind of phrase is just like the kid that comes up in the middle of the season and goes a little too hard on a routine play, the the everyday major leaguers would see that as a little bush league because it's just like – We'll have to check that out though because I, I, I'm worried that we're completely uh, wrong. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. This is just my own hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I almost wonder – because because I could see that, that, that being the origin just from the perspective of like that's the, the faux pas of like – Okay, yeah, it, it was a pop up, dude. Come on, don't don't do this. <laughs> uh, how about uh, the collar? We've heard that expression in baseball. Collar only from he like took the collar. 
that would I would assume. See if you even hadn't given me my assumption, you'd be pulling a pitcher. No, no, he took the collar. That's a hook. Um, a quick hook a, a manager could have. No, took the collar means he went zero for four. Oh, no, never heard it used in that context. And then on top of the zero for four, you could have an even worse game and have the golden sombrero. Yeah, that's zero for four with four strikeouts. Okay, you know that one. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. How about a crooked number? Crooked number. That means scoring more than one run in an inning. Right. Anything but one, zero or one. Is it? The because managers w- will talk about we put a cro- and they still use that term. I hear managers we put a crooked number up on a scoreboard. Yeah, just going to because yeah, it's, a baseball it's just a baseball expression it's great, that survived the test of time. I, I really like that one. How about Ephus? If you heard that word, yeah, yeah, I know that only because Orlando Hernandez El Duque threw one in a game. It's where you throw the big like high arcing like. Excellent. It's a curveball because gravity exists. Yeah, yeah. It's not, if you pitch, so the delivery from the pitcher is very slow. That, that it's more about it's slow and it's high, right? And it's supposedly uh, invented by Rip Sewell of the Pirates in the 1940s. So I, I invented this, you know, sort of like the Bugs Bunny like. You know, folly floater. I, I just imagine that I imagine like he just he messes up really bad <laughs> after that. The, the, the pitching the pitching coach comes out. And he goes, goes, what was that? And Sewell's like, oh, haven't you heard of this new pitch I invented? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's an Ephus pitch. That's the ticket. Um, how about a fireman? You've heard of fireman? A guy that comes in and throws really hard. Uh, no, well, yes and no. The fireman is a relief pitcher to come in and put out the fire. Okay, I guess I would think really hard because orig- the original relievers were all guys that came in and threw really hard. Yeah, yeah. This was what probably predates this. Just when you'd have you'd have the team was in trouble and we needed to call in our fireman. Yeah, the guy Actually. that comes out and puts out the fire because your starting yeah, pitcher yeah. went out there and gave up like ten runs in the first inning. How about um, a five tool player? Five tool player. He's got all the required skills: fielding, hitting, running, or hitting for. Ad- Average hitting for power, yep, yep. running and speed, and he's fast. speed, yeah. yeah, and speed. Yes, yes. Alice uh, uh, Escobar, five tool player. You know, I, and the problem was that none of those tools were baseball tools, <laughs> <laughs> and he never made it. You know, uh, very, very well in the major leagues at all. Um, how about if you get on your horse? Run really fast. Right, right. Going after a fly ball. Game. Yeah. And guys in, in announcers would say, get on your horse. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a guy hits a ball in a gap and he's yeah, running yeah, and trying yeah. to stretch an extra base hit. Exactly. How about a gopher ball? Go- I'm going to assume a home run. That's correct. That's right. You give up a gopher ball. Um, and how about, okay, lots of different names for home runs. So let's let's kind of have yeah. some fun. Um, let's see. I, I, I'm sure you can name him a, 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 a bit. A, big fly. Okay, big fly. Um, a dinger. Mm-hmm. Uh, they call them four baggers, a bomb, a wallop, going yard, a smash, a smash, um, a blast, uh, uh, an upper decker, a bomb, right, a moonshot, a round tripper, a granny or a grand slam, a tape measure blast. Mm-hmm. How about a tater? A tater. Ruthian blast, uh, a jack, the long ball, the long ball, right. Uh, anyway, um, and then on top of that was a grand salami. Yep, yeah, because yeah, that that's it's kind of like how you have a collar and then you have the golden sombrero. You've got all the home runs, but then there's the one above that, the grand slam. Yeah, I've, I've, I never heard it called a fence buster, but yeah, never. Not, it, I've never heard a fence buster. I, I guess that was an expression that was used. Um, okay, if you play, if you're at the hot corner. Third base. Okay. Although I never understood first base is also a corner. I guess not as many balls right. get pulled but, down there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Because more right into batters than left. Right. Exactly. Okay. okay. Uh, how about a knock? A hit. That's correct. Um, lights out. Really good pitching. Okay. No room at the end. Guys left on base. Uh, base is loaded. There's nowhere to put the player. Guys left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. nowhere to put the player. Uh, paint. Nailing like a particular location. On on when you're pitching, okay. Pull the string. Throw a really good curveball. Pull the string is not that. No, it is it is a changeup. Okay. It is, you, you almost as if you pulled the ball back and got him swinging early because he thought it was a fastball, and you pulled the string on it. You 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 fooled him. Um, uh, one of our favorite expressions, uh, being Med fans, has been around for a long time. Put it in the books to to, to record a win. Right, Howie Rose, uh, the great Howie Rose. Um, how about rabbit ears? In baseball, like a double? No, no. Rabbit ears was a guy who heard the fans. He's on the field, heard the fans screaming his name, making fun of him, and oh. was paying too attention so that he had rabbit ears. As yeah, he was I listening. never heard okay, of that. Okay. Yeah, that, that was a that was. A, how about a room service? Room no. service is that you get a room service hop. No, room service hop is, comes right to you. 
Yeah. Oh, a room service hop. Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That right. makes sense. Comes, comes right to you. It's really easy. You don't yeah, really easy it. play. Okay, yeah, that um, makes that. The senior circuit. Senior circuit. I don't know. National League. Oh, because it was the first league. Correct. Like the American League. And the National League always used to like calling it the junior. The American League started in 1901. Yeah, one yeah that's, the, that's kind of the problem is like if we're talking about the both of these formats. The National League is still like to rub it in yeah, the American League. somehow that matters. Oh, we were first. <laughs> so silly. Um, shelled. He got shelled. Get hit really badly. Right, right, right. Stay on top. Stay on top. Mm-hmm. The problem is there's a lot of different Good. contexts this yeah, could be used in. I was going to say that there are multiple. Actually, it can be it can be used in a couple of different contexts. Because you could use it in the context of. So pit. let's say you're a hitter. If you're a hitter, it probably means staying on top of the ball uh, where um, like you you need to make sure that you're not under – like you're, you need to stay on top of the ball and hit through the top of the ball and not be getting under. Even though that's all changing now and basically everything's about that's launch right. angle. You're right, you're and right. staying on top of the ball is not – but when you're teaching – kids to hit you want to teach them to stay on top of the ball because if you're having all the kids try to hit long fly balls they don't have the strength to do that so they're just going to pop up all the time How about for pitchers for pitchers it means when you're coming over the top you're not having your wrist lead and have it where, where like the bottom of your wrist is leading when you're throwing instead of the top of your hand because if you do that, that all your pitches are going to sail because you're, you're, you're essentially pushing the ball a little bit so you're going to lose velocity too very good very good so uh and, and along the lines by the way of the room service hop would be the sunday hop same same kind of thing as right yeah and i think that's also one of the more confusing things about a lot of baseball expressions is there's a lot of different ones for the same, same thing. thing yeah because so much of baseball is such a regional game yeah, too yeah, yeah um uh, here's one that's that's i think still used everybody kind of knows it at least by name and i'm not sure they know what it is what's a texas leaguer Texas leaguer. A Texas leaguer. I, I would assume referring to guys playing in a Texas league. No, no, no. But I don't know. Um, so you get a little blooper, a little dunker. They were called Texas leaguers because there was a guy back in the Texas league who specifically tried to hit these little dunking shots over the infield into the outfield, and that became known as a Texas league hit. And so it's still today, the Texas leaguer, you'll hear announcers use it all the time. Right, and I wonder if it's the kind of thing that without – people no, would only ever be able to recognize expression when used in context because it's only ever used in that context. Like I've never heard – like because I heard a seeing eye hit. OK. A seeing eye single. A seeing eye, yeah. Yep, yep, that's good. That's good. Well, yeah, the Texas League goes back to 1901. So it does you know, go all the way back to some guy named uh, Ollie Pickering right. um, who was famous for doing what I said, just poking him over the, uh, the infield and the outfield. So if you – um, know anything about the tools of ignorance? No. Being a catcher. The tools of ignorance. It was a stupid thing to do. You didn't want to get behind the plate and put that equipment on oh. and try to see. Those are the tools. So the catchers would refer to themselves as, yes, doing the you know tools of ignorance. Because, yeah, you know, I've never heard yeah, that. That's, yeah, that's definitely an old expression that's not used anymore. That's not used anymore. I, I'm sure some old catchers would still remember. How about uh, touch them all? Hitting a home run. We're take, touching all the bases. Or scoring, I guess. But. So this is you won't necessarily know this because I, I haven't heard it used in a long time, but I remember it. If you are the vulture, okay, you this, oh wow, a pitch, I, a, it's a pitching reference. The pitching reference. A pitching reference. Uh, okay, the only thing that I guess the most creative explanation I can come with it is your reliever coming in to strand guys on bases because you want to leave them dead there, but. <laughs> That's good. I, I guess that's probably a little bit too that's involved. Too, but you're, you're, you were on to something. So it is about a relief pitcher that kind of comes in and does nothing uh, good but gets the win. He just happened to be in the game. So he's the vulture. He's, he's just the there vulture. to pick okay, up the yeah. win because the team delivered him, you know, the runs when he was the yeah, pitcher he, of record. He comes in in like the 7-3 game and the team comes back and he right, ends right. up getting the win. Well, he's the pitcher of record even though, you know, sometimes guys can blow a save, and you know, get and win. get the win, you know, which is, you know, should not be able to happen. How about a waste pitch? I mean, it's like throwing something out of the zone that had no intention of being a strike just to see if he'll swing at it. A wheelhouse? Something like right in the – like if it's to the hitter, like right where they like to hit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where that comes from in baseball, but that is definitely it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you mentioned a seeing eye single that along the lines of a worm burner. Something hit like right along the ground really hard. Right, right, right. Um, so uh, what I found uh, – and when we, we talked about this, there, there are a lot of food-oriented uh, yeah, yeah. baseball expressions, way more than I expected. OK, so I'm going to go through them and these, these are kind of fun. So you can – I, it is interesting just thinking about it, though. Food and baseball are just so, like, linked when you think about it. Eating is such a big part of the baseball experience. Well, and, and eating and just – I don't know why the references are so much so. It's uh, The first that got me to it is if you get into somebody's kitchen, 
you heard that expression. Yeah, like throw it inside. Right. A pitcher can get – he got into his kitchen there. Yeah. So he's throwing it all up and in there and all that where he can't really swing. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a great expression that, mm-hmm. you know, only – but really limited to baseball. You have to really know baseball to know that one. It's pretty – Yeah. Um, how about you're a table setter? Like being a guy that puts like – because the idea is that, you know, you get yourself on base – you're a guy that gets on base setting the table for the guy to come up and score all the runs. you driving all the runs. So as a pitcher, you never wanted to throw a meatball. Yeah, something really <laughs> easy to hit. Um, but you definitely were looking forward to, if you're a pitcher, having the meat of the order come up. See, no, well, you would be looking forward to that. <laughs> well, for your team. For your team, For yes. your team. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Or facing the meat of the order was the hardest part for you as the pitcher. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the problem for me is meat of the order feels more of a stretch because heart of the order has supplanted that and used so much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, today. Today. Okay, okay. Remember, these are old times. So that they're, they're still around. Maybe you're right. Maybe right. not as popular. Right, right. The problem is, is that in this case – it's not like it's hard. It's not like something like hard of the, the the lineup or something. Hard of the order, meat of the order. One is supplanted. It is the clear version that's used. Yeah, now yeah is yeah. all I'm saying. Um, and 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 another one that isn't used as much today. Food oriented. So the the 1986 Mets were known for getting in rhubarbs. Yeah, that's definitely not used anymore. Now, no one uses that to you know, a scuffle or a, or a fight a ru- or anything yeah, like that. That's, but a rhubarb. That's a good word though. I, I kind of kind of like that. Um, or if you're caught between bases, you would be in, in a, a pickle. In a pickle. Yeah, you, you know, you know, big. You know, he hits a can of corn. Right, right. That's another one, right? That's, that's, now, that Okay, so that one's one of my favorites, obviously. And there's a lot of different, you know, uh, uh, derivations of where it came from. The most popular one is, is that the shelves were really high in the stores uh, during the war. And the, the corn was on the top shelf oftentimes. And they had these extender things that could clamp, you know, and you would, you would take it and, and it would reach up with this extension. And you'd grab the corn and drop it in your basket. It's easy to catch as a can of corn. Yeah. Okay. There were other derivations of that where the corn was on the lower shelf and it could fall right into your basket. But outfielders can, you know, field a ball. It's a can of corn. You know, he should catch. Yeah, the it's ball. A, an easy to catch fly ball. So some before before the game, you might play a little pepper. Yep. Okay. You play, and of course, they always had the uh, the signs behind home plate said no pepper games, uh, and 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 I, I, like I, I guess they used to play them there, and somebody must have gotten hurt because you're basically throwing against the wall, and and the batter's just chopping them back to a bunch of guys just fielding them, and they stop. They they would write no pepper games. Like okay, we're gonna the baseball players are not gonna do it because we're telling them not. To, I I never really understood that. Um, if you have a cup of coffee, like a visit up to the major leagues. Right, right. You just, you know, you just didn't really stay very long. Um, how about he threw him a cookie? Like a fat pitch. Yep, yep, exactly. Threw him a cookie uh, along the lines with uh, cheddar. Yeah, right? well, or, cheddar or, is like or, a really fast right, fastball. Right, cheddar or cheese. Cheese is a fastball. Yeah. Okay. And if you're a pitcher, you didn't want to have a lot of ducks on the pond. Guys are able to score. Right, right. Um, or the worst thing is, is and I know you'd hate this as a pitcher. You know, you've you've got it down. You got you know two guys on. You've got struck two guys out, and the guy hits a dying quail. Yeah, the, the ball, which is the same thing as a Texas leaguer. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. You said there's a lot of different names for the same kind of thing, but I, I guess you could eat a quail. So I put it in the food area we talked about a grand salami before mm-hmm. um and we talked about pitchers that like to nibble yeah yeah again we're eating but yeah exactly somebody that's picking and they're trying to paint the corners if you're a nibbler <laughs> very good very good um and he's trying to paint the corners over the dish yep <laughs> which is also known as the plate um and, and then if you're really good pitcher you put up a goose egg yep okay so that's another how about or and you don't want to give a potato no, you know, we already – we used Tater. We right. were talking about the names for home well, runs. if you throw it so fast, it could be aspirin like we said before. It could be a P. Yeah. Aspirin and P are a little outdated though. You're trying to stay out of a jam. Yep. Okay. And you don't want to get it's, jammed. No. You don't. <laughs> you don't That's bad. No jam. Um, and um, how about juiced? Yeah, I guess I guess the problem is – yeah, because juiced is juiced for, you know, using steroids. Well, and also uh, bases – could be juiced was bases full was an expression that yeah, the pro again I not think it's kind of like a hard the order no, I, the order I, thing. I, 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 so um I just I thought that was there were so many food ones that were so that, that were kind of interesting. Um there's a few that I didn't know. Okay. Really? And, and, and I don't think I don't think you've heard of them either. So um a banjo hitter. Guy in the middle of the order? No, no. A, a hitter who notches a lot of blue pits without hard contact. Weird. The name is said to come from the twanging sound of the bat at contact, like that of a banjo. Huh. Now, I remember hearing about a Punch and Judy hitter 
I mean, you wouldn't know this expression because Punch and Judy was a doll like in the 40s and puppets in the 50s. And But a Punch and Judy hitter would, is also somebody who doesn't have a lot of power. And it's really derogatory to call him a Punch and Judy hitter. He has, he's just not very good. Yeah, somebody has no power, essentially. Um, and, and another one is a duck snort. <laughs> so it's another baseball expression that I hadn't heard of. I, I have trouble calling these baseball expressions. A softly hit ball that goes over the infielders and lands in the <laughs> Isn't that the same hit? Yeah, apparently we really like coming up with bird names for this particular. Originally it was called the duck fart, but the team was popularized by the White Sox announcer uh, Hawk Harrelson, who's still around actually, Ken Harrelson, uh, to make it more think, family friendly. I don't think he uses it anymore. No, I, 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 doubt, uh, I doubt things. And, and the last um, you know, thing that I thought of is, is like today – be, being a goat, like in baseball, being the goat is was, a good thing. Today is a good thing. Yeah. The to, argument, uh, yeah. Uh, the, really for those who thing. don't know, now now people use the expression goat as an acronym for greatest of all time. And so there's a lot of debates on who is the goat in each individual right. sport. Right. When we talked about Bonehead Merkel in the 1908 World Series and he made the, you know, the base running mistake, he was the goat. That was a bad thing. Yeah, that was a, yeah, goat, I'm guessing in this context is you're the, 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 the villain, essentially, the bad guy. Yeah. Now, now, now the big discussion is, you know, it, who's the goat pitcher of all you know time is it Koufax or is right. it you know Walter Johnson or something like that in basketball it's always you know who's the goat LeBron or my, uh, MJ so yeah I guess the goat you know is for all sports as well you can be the goat in basketball yeah, and great, all that yeah. on both sides most people most of the time people usually keep it to just the individual sport like you know the general consensus would be that Tiger is the goat in golf because mm-hmm. really the only people you know there's not many people mm-hmm. that can challenge mm-hmm. that yeah, right 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 with, with tennis it's interesting because you can get into the Federer Nadal Djokovic debate you know we, that's we, what's fun yeah, yeah yeah that's okay. what's fun is who when you when people can disagree so there there are plenty more expressions and we expect that uh, you guys probably out there know some that maybe we didn't uh, oh yeah and if anybody has any that they've heard of that we didn't bring up on the show that they think are either particularly good or particularly rare we'd love to hear them because it's this it's interesting how many different ones are out there we'll put them up there so send us uh send us your emails at almost at gmail.com and you can get us at twitter at almost coop and we have a facebook page for anybody who's still on facebook thanks for listening subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform and you can follow us on twitter at almost coop